Hey guys, my name is Ozzy, and welcome to the channel. If you haven't already, go ahead and press that like button. But anyway, so today I'm going to be doing a review of Black Lightning Episode 4, Black Jesus. And man, let's just say, this episode has so much to cover, bro. Like, first of all, in the beginning of the episode, Jefferson Pierce is just walking through the hallways, you know, doing his thing as a principal. And then all of a sudden, they keep, all these students are saying someone's freaking out in the boys' bathroom. And then he's telling everybody, get the class, get the class. He goes to the bathroom and investigates. And then, the, then he goes sees one of his students, Bernard, and then he's just, like, going out of his mind. He's acting violent, and he's screaming, doing all types of crazy stuff. And then he starts running at, uh, he starts running at, uh, Jefferson Pierce. But before he does any of that, he picks up a urinal, and he just throws that. I'm just like, bro, what is this man on right now? I'm like, he acted totally different. I'm like, I ain't never ever seen anything like this before. Like, I was like, man, this guy gotta be on some, like, I thought he was on some, like, mutagen type stuff, like, from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something, because Homeboy was acting all the way up. Anywho, he throws a urinal, just rips it right off the wall. I'm just like, um, <laughs> it's crazy. But he throws the urinal straight at Jefferson Pierce, and Jefferson Pierce dodges it. And then he hits him with a, with, with some, with a lightning blast, and then Bernard just gets up unfazed. And then he has to hit him with a second one, and then he has to hold him on. He's like, zzz, zzz. And then he's the, the Bernard is just like uh, that it actually knocks him out that time. I'm like, bro. So basically, he just finds out late. He he looks in his pockets and he finds that he got like some type of drug on him in, a, in like some type of tube. And then basically, later in the episode, the the uh, the board of education they're trying to they're trying to get Bernard expelled. But Jefferson talks to uh, Bernard's parents and like Bernard is actually a really good student. He just made he just messed up one time and then like he was offered drugs and he took them. He got a free sample, and then he just, like, I don't know why, he just automatically just threw away all his home training, but, hey, it happens to the best of people, man. So his parents are just begging Jefferson, please, my son, he's he's about to get a full ride into this prestigious university, and then Jefferson, he said he's going to do everything he can, but the board, they're basically just trying to expel him because they don't want any, like, drug use at all. Not knowing his whole situation, they're just thinking that he's just another hood rat or something, which is crazy because, like, the board of education, they're asking for, like, his information, but it's like, even if he gave him the, his information of being, like, a good student, they were still going to expel him regardless. So later in the episode, they're just, like, trying to get that situated. And it eventually gets cleared. But before any of that, Anissa uh, and Jefferson and Lynn and the investigator, they're all, like, they're all having dinner together. And they're basically just all talking about how they feel about heroes and Black Lightning in general. Anissa, clearly, she supports Black Lightning. Lynn is like halfway here, halfway not there, and then the investigator is like, no, he just creates problems for other people, whether he, because he uh, creates unintentional problems for other people, and then you realize like how different everybody's viewpoints on Black Lightning really are. So clearly, Lynn, clearly Lynn is just like not really in support fully. She's thinking about the family because they're all. You just see how like they all fit into it. The investigator is just not really having, it. and then Anissa just basically says that. You have you have to you have people have to take the law into their own hands basically if they can have the ability to do good, and that's when she just asked to be excused from dinner because she realized that no one is really trying to like listen to her points, and she leaves. And then later we see that Tobias and uh, what's her name, Lady Lady Eve, yeah, Tobias and Lady Eve they basically meet up, and then she says that the streets are starting to think that the one hundred is incredible anymore because Black Lightning is confirmed to be alive. In nine years, he was confirmed to be dead. So now it's making Tobias look bad on the streets like he's a liar. And then Tobias has to go and figure out what's causing all this mess and how Black Lightning survived. He talks to the doctor that confirmed his death. And he says, so you just see some dude in a black earth and wind fire looking suit. And, he's, and then the dude is basically like, um, well, we, we thought that we saw a body fall in the river. So we assumed it had to be his. He said, you didn't check the body. And then Tobias goes off and then he gets one of his goons. His goon puts on a brass knuckle. He just like, boom, boom, boom. He just, he just beating the dude's face until he died. I'm like, dang, the doctor just died off of that. So basically, Tobias is doing nonsense. Like, if you don't take care of the situation, he's going to take care of you type of villain. So, yeah. So basically now, later in the episode, we see that Tobias meets up with his younger sister. And they're basically just trying to formulate a plan to, like, take out Black Lightning once and for all. Because he's trying, he's trying to keep his street credibility up. He can't do that if people think that he can't take care of Black Lightning. And so their big plan is to just turn the city against Black Lightning so that way they don't really have to do any of the dirty work. And in order to do this, they get Khalil, Jennifer's boyfriend, like a bunch of gifts. They get him like, like a PlayStation 4, 
they deck him out with like a whole bunch of snacks and stuff, and then, and you know, this this is a whole lot of drama going on in this episode. So basically, Jennifer herself, she doesn't want to run track anymore because her coach isn't allowing her to see her boyfriend. And we see Jennifer torn between like two sides, like she wants to be there for Khalil, but at the same time, she's like, she, she you can see in her face that she doesn't know she can really live this life of seeing him deal with all this pain, because I mean, at the end of the day, she's only like 16 or 17. So having to like, she just got a boyfriend. Her first birth, her first birth boyfriend at that. He's already injured, and it's like her whole life. She's just like, wow, like is this one we have to do? And like, now the doctors are telling Khalil that he's definitely gonna be paralyzed and he's not gonna be able to walk ever again. I, I feel like that's a lie though, because like when he was, he did like some training exercise, but he was able to walk, although he was on some crutches. I feel like they sh they should have just said he's not gonna be able to run again, but I don't know. Maybe it could change. But yeah, all that aside, I was really sad. I feel like they're just they're just they're, they're just doing the whole Peter Parker thing. Just go ahead and <laughs> and hurt everybody that you care about, so that way you don't have anyone to lose when you become a hero. But yeah, so and this is basically testing out her powers at this point, cause she's she notices some dudes giving giving drugs to what to a few of her students, which are all female, and then she talks to the dudes to back off, and then dude dude pulls up his shirt and he shows that he got that Glock on him. You know, he's like he packing. He said, "What's up?" And she said, "You left." She said, "Does she?" Anissa pulls up and she remembers that she can't be out here exposing her powers to everybody. So she she just looks at him, and then home the drug dealer they're like, "Oh, that girl crazy." So Anissa just gets back in the car. She looks at us like she, clearly we both know that we she's gonna come back and pull up on them, you know, which she does later. And like when she does come back to the drug dealer, she beats them up like really pretty badly. Like if I don't if I didn't know any better, like the way she punched them to the ground. Like, I think she put them in a coma, but she checked their pulse and she was like, oh my god, are they alive? And like, they were still breathing, so she calls the, the ambulance to come pick them up. And then Loki, she realized that she really needs to learn how to control the power because, like, when she hurt, hits people, she's putting so much force into it. Like, it's crazy. And later in the same epi in this episode, like, she and Grace, they're just chilling. They're leaving uh, Grace's restaurant that she works at, that her family owns. And then these dudes, they pull up on them, and they're basically calling her like a, like a lesbian a whorehouse and all this. I'm just like, bro, that's crazy. People really be attacking. Like, you know, it's crazy because first of all, they're already minorities, and then they're lesbian too. So it's just like they just they just got a lot that they got to deal with. So I'm just like, damn, that's crazy. And then Grace is basically just saying that we have a restraining order on you guys. Don't try to pull up. And then homeboy just like real up, smacks her to the ground, and then he, he like puts a, a huge knot in her head, like she got like a, a bloody scar. Or whatever. I'm just like, these dudes acted. Oh. And so Anissa just loses control and then she just she pushes dude into into the car and he bounces off. Surprisingly the car the car doesn't have a dent in it. The dude just falls back and is passed out. And then the dude's goons they they're all in suits by the way, so you know, this is like a mob or something. They pull up on her and then she just stomps the ground. And meanwhile all this is happening, Jefferson is on the other side or not the other side, he's a block over and he's like investigating the uh, the drugs, like the drug called Green Light, and which is the drug that he found out uh, Bernard, the student earlier who was ODing on the drug, which gave him like all these crazy powers. Side note, uh, Peter, his tailor slash uh, man in the, man in the uh, chair, he says this drug, Green Light, is like basically like a mix of PCP and crack cocaine because all it takes is one hit to get addicted. That's why the 100, when they distribute the drug, they give out a free sample. This is a ploy because the moment they get that one free sample, they're hooked and they're going to be buying forever. And, like, there's been 36 overdoses since the drug came out. So, like, clearly it's going to be a problem. I feel like, though, if you're going to be a drug dealer, if you sell drugs that immediately put people into a hospital, like, yes, you make the person addicted, but at the same time, if they're dead, they can't buy from you. So I'm just like... Are these drug dealers even smart? So I'm just like, okay. I'm just saying, if I was a drug dealer, theoretically, I'm just saying, I, I would be a little bit smarter than that. It wouldn't make it, like, that too overly addicted where it could kill somebody, you know? That's just, that's just not how you get that money. But anywho, so he hears the sounds and he wants to go investigate it. And then Peter's like, no, nah, don't worry about it. He looks at the footage and then he notices, like, foot, like the ground being shattered. He's just like, okay, there's got to be somebody with, like, some type of superpower. So he tells, uh... I'm, he, he knows that it's Anissa, like, in the back of his mind, he knows, because, like, in the last episode, he saw a tape of her, there was, like, a recording of her using her powers, and then he sees it, and then he deletes it and hides it from, uh, Jefferson, because he doesn't want him to, like, to look into it, 
Which is crazy because you know they supposed that's supposed to be his, he's supposed to be Jefferson's mentor. So you would think that he would share that type of information with him. And you know, because they team up, they could do a lot better than fighting solo dolo. I'm just saying. So basically, the truck that's uh, carrying the drugs gets away, but uh, Black Lightning goes back to investigate. And the cool thing about this whole scene is that Peter makes like these. His, he updates his goggles, right, which gives him like electricity vision so he can basically see like the outline of anything with electricity inside so he can detect human bodies vehicles and other appliances that run on electric electricity because you know human bodies they all have like their own electromagnetic field and they also have like some slight uh electricity run through your body so he could detect human beings as well which is pretty cool so he has like this elect electricity vision which is awesome so i hope they use that more often in the series because that would be a really cool thing and then Basically, all that happens, but the reason why uh, he he was able to find the the place in the the drug warehouse in the first place because one of his old friends that he used to like go to school with he finds out he knows that he's selling drugs but he tells him that he he needs he should get out of it but the homeboy is just like nah I'm good I I need to take care of my family and then he comes back later as Black Lightning and then he basically just beats up everybody and he intimidates them and then dude's like okay okay I won't do it but please. I'm not trying to go to jail because if I go, they're going to give me 30 years because I'm black. You already know this. So he gives him a compromise. He says that if you don't sell drugs ever again, I'm not going to come back and find you and get you locked up. But he said, I will have to knock you locked up. But he said, before you knock me out, can I take a picture? And then he's like, oh, he's like, light up, light up. And then Black Lightning's like, this, he's like, is this crazy? And then he just, he just punches him in the face and catches his body. I was just like, man, even the, even like the, the drug dealers, they, they all love Black Lightning, even though they, they all criminals. They, they still trying to, you know, that's a black hero. That's even even the criminals went in on the on the uh, on the support, so that's kind of funny. So I was just like, bro, that's 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 actually realistic, though. But anywho, this episode itself, there was just like so much going on with like, and this is trying to overcome like, not even overcome, but she's just getting used to her powers. So it just shows that she has a lot to learn. So hopefully, like she can get some training in with uh, Jefferson Peace. I I really hope that he finds out that his daughter has powers. Cause I I, I can't believe the thought hasn't even crossed his mind that. His children could potentially have his powers. Like, Lynn is a freaking doctor. How is no one even, like, thinking about this? Like, I guess they thought because they haven't noticed any powers that it just skipped over a generation. But I'm just saying, they, they, they're they tripping. You know that if you had children, at least one of them will have powers. Oh, you're bugging out. So, Jennifer hasn't unlocked the powers yet. But anyway, at the end of the episode, uh, Tobias Bull comes into the room and he's basically just, like, trying to manipulate Khalil into believing that Black Lightning is the reason that he gets hurt, which in reality, Tobias Will is the reason why he got shot in the first place. So I'm I'm hoping that during during the end of the season, Khalil's gonna find out or that he's gonna feel super betrayed and he's just gonna go off with Tobias Will. I mean, but Tobias Will kinda crazy. That man looked like he'd be hitting the gym low key. And also you see his goons, his goons, <laughs> they be shooting people on sight. So you already know what's going on. He himself shot Lala in the head, no no like didn't feel no type of way, but he was just like boop. And took out Lala right in the jail cell, like, he got his hands in everything, bro, so, hopefully Khalil doesn't, like, doesn't get killed, because I'm like, they already paralyzed him, like, I hope he doesn't die later in the series, because that would just make it too depressing for me, like, honestly, and, you know, Jennifer, she, she's only, she's only 16, 17, like, this is her first love, she, she, they didn't even, they didn't even get to have their first time together, so I know, like, she low-key sick, but I know she cares about him more beyond that service level anyway. So, cause like he was helping her out while she was like going through like this whole rebellious stage and getting her to not drink. So Khalil is good for her. So I really hope he doesn't die, cause that might actually make Jennifer snap. So I hope the creators don't go that far. But uh, yeah, tell me what you guys liked about this episode. Is there anything that you guys want me to uh, talk about for the upcoming episode? Um, let me know. Go ahead, comment down below what you liked about it, and let's start to have a discussion going on here, cause. So far, I've done three reviews on the past three episodes. I feel like I'm going to end up uploading the the reviews on Thursdays. So, the episodes come out on Tuesday, so bear with me. Because I am a college student, so I, I can't, like, I can't, I can't, like, upload the review right after the episode is made like I did on the first week, on the first episode. So, uh, bear with me. And I'm out. Peace.